Well, I was actually taking a physical fitness test for the military, and my heart rate was too fast. And so they stopped the test, and they instructed me to go see the medical squadron that they wanted me to get my heart checked. So to me, it was like, I'm 21 years old. You know, this is crazy. So I go down, I have the EKG done, and they're like, something's abnormal. And they said, you're not allowed to return to duty until you go to a cardiologist. I had been having some severe chest pain, and that's what really triggered it. I had a really bad episode one night coming home from taking my kids to the movies. And if I didn't have my kids with me, I, I probably would have called 911, but I insisted on driving home, and I did. And my husband was like, this is enough, go to the doctor. So I looked online, you know, everything online is true, right? And I self-diagnosed myself, which I should have never done. But I thought, it's my gallbladder. Yep. So I made an appointment with my family doctor and I said, I need you to check my gallbladder. When she examined my stomach though, near my gallbladder, she was like, does this hurt? I was like, no. She's like, I don't think it's your gallbladder. I'm like, okay, what do you think it is? And she said, I wanna check your heart because I had family history of heart disease. So she sent me to a cardiologist here in Charleston. And uh, once he reviewed the echo, he said, you know, he didn't want to do a heart cath at the time. He wanted to choose the less invasive way. And um, he opted to do a CT scan of my heart. And the very next day, it was October uh, 2014, they called me and they said, um, you have dilated cardiomyopathy. And I had just got home from work and I said, I, I wish that you were calling me to tell me I had a blockage. I wish that you were calling me to tell me I needed a heart valve replacement, anything other than dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, because ultimately the only cure for that is a heart transplant. My dad got sick when I was 11. And at 11 I couldn't comprehend exactly what his disease entailed at all. There, there was no way I could comprehend it. But for me, um, growing up in you know, sleeping in intensive care room floors, going to different hospitals. Um, my dad was diagnosed at 42 with cardiomyopathy. And so we knew that he needed a heart transplant. And when, as a child, watching your parents suffer, I knew the heartache of it. And I knew that with what I have now, my children were gonna have to witness the same exact thing that I grew up knowing and I wouldn't wish that heartache on anybody. You know, for me it's really hard because I want to be here to raise my kids. They are my life. And um, for them to be so young and to have to understand that I can't keep up with them, um, that mommy has to lay down and take naps, um, it's hard for me to even put them in that position where they have to say, okay, well, mommy's got to sleep now or anything like that, but um, it's, it's hard because you realize when something like this changes your life drastically because before my everyday routine was go, go, go. If my son wanted me to stop and build Legos with him, it was, you know, oh, you're doing a good job, go on about your business, you know, or you got to tend to your career and keep, you know, going along. And then once it happened, you realize how many things you take for granted. This disease is a silent, silent killer. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. I can try to slow it down, but inevitably, it'll get me. So by giving, it could help, you know, find a next step for someone like me. It could help not so much find the cure, but to um, possibly give me a new option, possibly give others new options. That's the big thing.